Hi, my name is Terry Brown. I'm a mechanical engineer and lecturer at the University of Technology, Sydney. In this instruction video, I'll work through an example of calculating the internal actions of a loaded structural member. Now, working out these internal actions um, at this uh, location enables us to calculate the stresses uh, at this location here. So using our familiar equations such as stress equals my upon i for bending, shear stress equals vq upon it, we can uh, make use of those internal actions in order to make use of those stress analysis equations. Uh, but in this problem I'll just go through the process of determining the internal actions. Okay, so let's get started. The first step in um, obtaining the internal actions is to take an imaginary cut through the section here where we want to know the internal actions and then we draw one side or the other of that cut. So in this example I'm just going to draw this side and then put on the external loads that are applied to that side of the component. Next we'll need some um, axes to refer to and now we're going to use the equations of equilibrium um, to calculate the internal actions acting on this face of our cross section here. So let's start with some of the forces in the x direction equals zero. And in this problem we have a 500 Newton force here acting in the x direction. So that needs to be resisted here at the internal face. So we can put that in and we call that N and then write out our, our equation. So we get uh, the internal axial force, N, is equal to 500 newtons. Okay, so next we'll look at some of the forces in the y direction. And we have up here a 200 newton force acting in the y direction. So internally here we'll need an internal force to resist that. So we can put that in and that's going to be a shear force. So we'll call that V subscript Y. Then of course... Uh, implementing our equilibrium equation, we get Vy equals 200 newtons. Okay, so next we'll do some of the forces in the z direction. So our z direction is over here, and we have a 300 newton force. So we need uh, an internal force to resist that. And again, that's going to be a shear force. So we'll call that V subscript z. And then applying the equilibrium equation, we have Vz equals 300 newtons. Okay then, so the next step in the problem is to start looking at the internal moments at the cross section. So let's start by writing the uh, equation of equilibrium for moments and we'll first look at the moment about the x-axis. So we'll look at moments about this x-axis here and we've got uh, a 300 newton force acting perpendicular to that x-axis and at a distance, so that's going to cause a torsional moment which is resisted by the internal torsional moment at our cross-section of interest. When I draw that moment um, on the free body diagram, I use the vector uh, diagram method to show that moment, so using the right-hand rule. Um, if you're not sure about that, you can go and look at my uh, previous video on internal actions and I go through the explanation of the right-hand rule. Okay, so that's showing the vector direction of that internal moment and it's a torsional moment as it's about a longitudinal axis. Uh, so we'll call that T for torsion and we can do our calculations now. So T is equal to 300 times its perpendicular distance which is in this case 2 metres. So our internal torsional moment is 600 newton metres. Right, so now let's uh, start looking at moments about the y-axis. So we write our moment equation and we have our y-axis up here. So let's look at our forces that we've got applied. So the 200 Newton force is parallel to the y-axis, so that will have no moment effect. The 500 Newton force passes through the y-axis, so that will have no moment effect. And the 300 Newton force is perpendicular to the y-axis and at some distance away from it. So that will have a moment effect and we can draw in 
the internal action that will resist that. So this force here is going to tend to twist or rotate this body around this direction. So we need our internal action here to resist that. All right, so let's do the calculation for that. So this moment here, my is equal to 300 times the perpendicular distance here, which is one meter. So that gives us a moment of 300 Newton meters. And finally, we look at moments about the z-axis. So we have our z-axis here. Let's look at our external loads. So the 300 Newton force is parallel to the z-axis, so no moment effect. The 200 Newton force is perpendicular to the z-axis and it uh, has a perpendicular distance from that axis of one meter. So that will have a moment effect. And the 500 Newton force also acts perpendicular to the z-axis and its perpendicular distance is two meters. So that will also have a moment effect. So we can draw in our internal bending moment, mz, to resist those um, external forces causing a moment. So let's write in our equation. So it's, uh, mz will be equal to our 500 newtons times its perpendicular distance, which was 2, plus the, two, the 200 newton force times its perpendicular distance of 1 metre and they are both tending to cause a rotation uh, around this direction, around the z-axis. Okay, so both the same sign and resisted by that moment mz. And that of course is all equal to 100, sorry, 1200 newton metres. Okay, so we've now found all of our internal actions acting on this face of our cross-section. We can, of course, also look at the other side of the cut and look at what's happening on this face of our cross-section. And we should know that um, the internal actions here will be equal and opposite to those that we have on this other side of the cut. OK, so let's start adding those in. So first of all, we'll take our axial force and that will be shown down here, equal and opposite to what we have up here. And our internal torsional moment about the x-axis, equal and opposite to what's shown up here. Internal shear force Vy, <coughs> excuse me, opposite to this one. OK, you should of course realise that these forces and moments here are in fact equivalent to these external loads applied up here. So you could um, bypass this step and just say, OK, at this point here, what forces and moments do these external loads or these external forces produce at this point? OK, so you should realise that equivalent to the 200 Newton force here is force Vy and a moment mz. Uh, similarly, the force 500 Newtons here is equivalent to that normal force plus a moment about the z-axis. And our 300 Newton force, that is equivalent to our force Vz and moment my. Another way to get directly to these internal actions from our external loads is to use the um, vector moment equation. Okay, so I'll go through that now. So the vector moment equation says that the vector moment is equal to R cross F, where R is the position vector and F is the force vector. So the position of our forces relative to the point at which we want to know the moment is shown there. So that's our position vector R. And these three forces can be shown as a resultant force F. And we need our um, coordinate system with our axes shown, so X, Y, and Z. So let's write our position vector in vector notation. So it's one meter in the X direction. So one times I, our unit vector I in the X direction, 
plus 2 meters in the y or j direction. So we have our position vector 1i plus 2j. Okay, so let's, let's now write our um, force in vector notation. So we have a 500 newton force in the x direction, so 500i, and a 200 newton force in the minus y direction, so minus 200j, and a 300 newton force in the positive z direction, so plus 300k. So to calculate our moment, we need r cross f. Okay, so let's multiply the components through. So we'll have i, 1i times 500i, or i cross i, and then we'll have 1 times minus 200, i cross j, so i cross j, plus 1i times 500, so i cross k. Okay, so next multiply through by the 2j, so we have 2 times 500, j cross i, and then 2j times minus 200j, so 2 times minus 200j cross j, and 2j times 300k, so 2 times 300j cross k. Okay, so you should know that um, two vectors in the same direction, cross product is 0, so i cross i here is equal to 0, i cross j will be k, i cross k will be minus j, so if you're not sure about why that's minus j, again, go back and look at my previous um, video, Internal Actions Example 1, where I go through um, cross product and the signs. So j cross i will be minus k, j cross j will be 0, and j cross k will be i. Okay, so now we can just do the maths and write out our equation. So we'll have minus 200k, minus 300j, minus 1000k, plus 600i. And combining the two k components, we end up with 600i minus 300j minus 1200k. Right then, so now looking at our um, moment equation, we see that this term here is a moment about the x-axis, right, indicated by our unit vector i. So that will be our torsional moment about the x-axis, t. This one here is the j unit vector, so about the y-axis, so that will be my, and k is the z-axis moment, so mz. And if you compare those to what we had previously, uh, you should see that that's the same as that we obtained using the equilibrium method. Right, so now we can look at um, our cross-section and take a cut and look at one side or the other. So this time we'll just look at uh, this left-hand side here and start drawing on our internal actions. Okay, so we'll have forces can be just... Um, moved down to here, noting of course that by moving a force off its line of action there's um, needs to be an equivalent moment. Uh, so we have our three forces, normal force Vz and Vy, and our three internal actions that we've just calculated up here. Uh, and again you should see that they're the same as what we had previously for the equilibrium method. Okay, so now you can go ahead and make use of these internal actions in your stress analysis, equa stress analysis equations. Uh, but I'm going to stop here in this example. So I hope that was uh, helpful to you and um, good luck with your stress analysis problems and in your exams and I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening. Bye.